Namaste beautiful yogis, welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga, I'm Ali and today we're doing one of the most majestic trees on earth, Sequoia. And Sequoia is the redwoods in California, I've seen Sequoia even in a couple of places in Bulgaria, just a single tree. That was a, a line I read and it really inspired me. When you enter into a Sequoia forest or a redwood forest, it's like entering Earth's cathedral. It's a very powerful experience being around the trees. They're the longest lived trees on earth. They go up to a thousand years, but even some go to up to 2000 years old. They do flower. There is a little bud flower that they create. And from that bud flower, there is a flower essence that helps people tap into their massive creative potential and pulling darkness and creating and going up. Uh, into the light. It is a representation of incarnations and coming into the physical with the imprint of eternal life because it's such a long-lived tree and the creative power of the tree I think this is where it, it shines and where it taps into our current times. We have closed one door, the old world. And if you have to grieve, you grieve. Maybe you grieved last year when we did all the classes because that was when we closed it. But everybody is on their own mini timeline. So we close that door and that old world is never coming back. Those of us who are old enough to remember it, of course, that is a, a, a goodbye. That is an ending that is always, there is always sorrow in an ending, even if it's a good ending. And we are now tapping into our creative power with creativity starts with a vision the vision lives in the ethereal realm the etheric so from the etheric we manifest it into creation so we are starting it as a vision as a seed which will go into a seedling into and sprout into a plant a tree a, a, a manifestation we're starting to build the new we're going to be the pioneers the creators the bridge generation of that new and we have to stay in that vision and we are all going to restructure our offering even those of us that are serving already in what is the futuristic service sector uh, service um, vocations even people like teachers yoga teachers i mean or um, meditation coaches or soul coaches soul guides uh, hypnosis etc all those coaches uh, educators for children in the new ways all of those people will have a quantum leap forward and if you are working in the old matrix you're going to have the opportunity to align with your soul purpose and begin to serve and share your light so there, these are going to be, uh, they're going to be change in these times and you have to stay really focused because the old is going to want to pull you into its um, dystopia, into the fear matrix, back, back into the fear matrix. And when you stay in the heart and in the vision of where you're going and in the realization of the immortal, immortal nature of your soul, the indestructible nature of your consciousness. So consciousness is indestructible and eternal. So there is nothing to fear. We faced our fears in the last year. I did a workshop even on death because that is a very important one. As long as we see it in fear, uh, death, and all these dystopian things that can happen, we are not able to be free, liberated, and to move forward. So we, and also we integrated the shadow because without the shadow integration, we're half. And it, the half that expresses itself into the world is the dark half, the unconscious dark half. And that is the one that communicates with the world. So that's why we wanna sit with the shadow, face the shadow, integrate it, befriend it, so we become whole. Those are all the steps we took last year through the classes, through the programs I did, writing, etc. Um, just on an energetic level, people did that on their own through writing, etc. And now I think the very important theme for now is your creative power because you're gonna be creating. Stay above, stay above the dystopian uh, picture that they wanna paint to you, for you, and draw you in, suck you in it, no. There is two timelines forming. They're semi-parallel, but also moving away from each other very slowly. It's gonna be a long time, I think. 
and one is the new earth, new humanity forming, the other is the new world order, or the, the dystopian timeline, the destructive timeline, the fear-based timeline, with a lot of, there is going to be more anxiety there, more immune uh, function, uh, dysfunction, uh, immune system dysfunction. In this one, of course, it's going to be a long path, because it's going to be a long, long, long path to see at all a new humanity or new consciousness. We are just in the seeding, seed phase. We birth, birthed it last year. Remember, we were in the birth canal and it was dark and we didn't know where we were going. Now we're out of the birth canal, I think. And this is the seed portion where we still don't know where, what's going to be. But we're starting to sprout and we're starting to have the vision and we're going to pull into our creative potential creative seed and the sequoia will be that energy of creativity of coming into the physical and being majestic and phenomenal and drawing from the darkness of the earth and shooting up into the the heavens um very tall trees super tall trees so this is all structure water going up this is a long intro, but I think Sequoia is worth it, and also what we're going through on a collective level is worth it uh, mentioning. So that you know that actually we're not going down the dystopian route. We're not. It may look like it. Stay away from that timeline. Choose where you're going because you are the manifesto creator of your own destiny. So do not consent to it and choose where you're going. And with that creative potential, you're going to be the light to others. You're going to be the guide guiding light you're gonna guide and illuminate the path for others so we can all pull each other forward pull each other up there will be crossover between the the timelines some people will realize that that dystopian timeline it's more pain more sickness more fear it just never ends it's it's just it keeps spiraling further and further so there will be opportunities for crossover but these are the times to choose where you're going these are the exact times to really choose where you're going I've taken over a year to contemplate this and literally 20 years to just wait and expect and imagine, um, envision this. So it's, it's nothing new, it is not just, it didn't just happen in 2020, this was a long time coming. We knew that humanity will be expanding, there will be a shift in consciousness and that leads to a paradigm shift. So the old reality is going to start to flicker and look weird and the new is going to start looking to those who are really in the matrix, crazy, but it is coming. And to what extent we'll leave it, I, I can't say, but we are definitely going to be the bridge, the beginning of building it. And that is in some ways more exciting than just living in eternal peace because we're that pioneering generation. We, we get to be that Uranian force of innovation, of heart frequency, of creating new, new communes, new connections. People really connecting from the heart and, and be coming together in, in this new frequency of uh, human consciousness that is, that is coming down the line. So uh, uh, I kind of imagine a certain timeline, but I'm not attached to it, of, um, maybe within the next four to eight years we'll see or even two to five years two to eight years we'll see those communities starting to form and it's going to become more and more because it's the age of aquarius that is just where we're going uh they're gonna uh, some of them will have problems to hatch out right but some of them will feel really good from the beginning but there will be this feeling of soul tribe of really connecting on in meaningful ways of building something new it's just it will have that beginner energy that excitement and that new connection that new alignment based on resonance and um and probably within the next 30 to 50 years, the discrepancies between those two timelines will become not um, in any way um, compatible. So there will be uh, an actual physical split to where souls will begin to incarnate on planets that are according to their resonance. So those who choose to expand will continue with Gaia because Gaia is expanding and we're given that opportunity to really upgrade our frequency because the Schumann resonance is raising um, uh, tangibly, physically. The um, neutrons from neutrinos from the central sun are coming in, so more light is pouring in. We'll become literally more light 
who hold more light will become more light slowly that's a very slow process we'll see the changes soon but the changes will continue way beyond our uh, this lifetime we're talking a few hundred years but you know being that seed is amazing and it's inspiring and being that sequoia energy of grandeur majestic power mm, reminder of eternal life a longevity and eternal life and this capacity to be creative and to tap into creative roots because the roots run deep and the structured water that runs all the way to the top for hundreds of meters crazy it, it's just phenomenal so and there is a lecture by Tom Cowan that is um, uh, on structured water, on moonwood actually, on moonwood. And the moonwood basically is a way of harvesting wood, they do it in Austria, where the, uh, they cut the tree, it falls down, uh, downhill, so the top falls down, and it dries that way. That uh, allows it on, at a certain uh, uh, moon phase. So that allows the structured water to be preserved alive in there, and from that they build houses that do not use any chemicals, any glue, anything. Those houses really um, align, I think, um, with certain um, uh, color frequencies in the human body. Uh, they don't uh, they don't burn. It takes uh, I think a hundred or a thousand hours. Uh, to um, try to burn a house to get it on fire they don't fall in earthquakes they don't develop mold they need very little AC and very little heating because imagine you're living inside of a tree that self-regulates um, obviously the magnetic field is amazing it protects from EMF frequency so that is something uh, to me very inspiring it's a little unattainable at the current moment for us to order those uh, houses you can if you have the resources, you can order it and build it uh, in any part of the world because they ship them, they pre-manufacture them and ship them, uh, the houses, but it's something to look forward to in the future because that is the type of living and the health-giving environment that it gives us. And just imagine living in a house that has preserved uh, structured water and has the energies of the earth and the moon phases and the, um, the, the magnetic frequencies that the human body needs to stay healthy. All right, all of these trees and uh, all of this intro, I'll mark the class where it starts so you don't have to hear the intro <laughs> again next time. But now we begin and remember to flow with strength and ease. Starting at the front of the mat, roll the shoulders back, drop them down, open the palms of the hands forward and see yourself as a majestic sequoia. So begin to expand, become grand. Begin to feel yourself expanding. The roots growing, the trunk growing, and just a majestic feel to yourself. Feel that majestic feel to your soul, to your over soul. Feel yourself as this majestic, angelic being, a teacher, a guide, a light to others. And your light expanding and growing as you become a bigger, bigger, older sequoia. And feel the majestic power of residing in that moment, moment to moment, moment, present moment is this consciousness of a tree, which is a different form of consciousness than the human consciousness. It falls in a different time, in a different way of connecting to the divine. So you tap into that. And now feel your creative fruits streaming deep into Gaia, into the earth really deep and that's where you source your creative potential your creative power what you're gonna bring into that new humanity what you're gonna give that new um, earth new humanity new consciousness that's forming you don't have to see what it is just feel it just draw that creative juicy power up 
the roots into your body, into your veins, into your um, meridians. Fueling the meridians, the chakras, the cells, the physical, the, the ethereal, the astral body, the uh, casual body, the emotional body, etheric. Feel that creative juice running into your veins, into your spiritual veins. And feel it, feel its quality. So you start to get a feel of what your path will be in that new humanity, what your role will be, what your service will be. We're all gonna have to serve. Serve from the heart, serve in alignment, serve with what really inspires us, with our passions, with our talents, with our creative force. And now expand way tall, way past the darkness, into the light, really tall, above it all, like a cathedral. Grandeur about you, about the soul, about the, the body you occupy, about the consciousness that you are. Inhale and reach up, drop the shoulders down and feel your body merging with that vision. Shift your weight onto the right leg. And we're going to bring the hands down and back and take warrior one on the right side. Level the hips, feel the strength in your lower back, in your core. Step it back in high lunge and sweep your hands up and back. and chair at the front. And come up arch. And exhale the hands down, shift onto the left. Take warrior one, a uh, warrior three. Feel the strength in your glutes and back upper back as well, all the muscles, the structure supporting you here, lifting the heel, feel the integrity in your structure. And step it back, sweeping up. and chair. Feel that structure of water that flows through a tree, flowing visually through you and just repairing everything, bringing juicy healing to your cells, to your structure. Even imagine the smell of a tree. Great. Warrior three on the right side. Again, feel that strength of the hamstring, of the glutes, of the back, lower back, upper back, shoulders. Turn the toes down, flex the foot. Feel the heel, the heel of your foot as a guide and step it back, high lunge, sweeping back. And in prayer, twist. Inhale up, chair. And go deep in that chair. 
just stretch yourself to a good chair until everything is burning real good burn all right warrior three on the left side again really feel if you to hold this it really requires strong structure feel it and you're also building it Step it back, sweep it up and back. You're here to feel this, to just feel this movement. Hands in prayer twist. There is no goal to the practice other than just being in the moment with the flow. Kind of like life, to experience it. as an observer who is fully involved, fully in the heart, fully compassionate. Coming out, chair. Right side, warrior three. Again, feel the strength. Posterior chain working here. The hamstring is involved. Everything is working. Imagine that your breath is that structure of water that flows in the tree. Moving through the body. Step it back, sweep it back, exhale, behind, clasp and open, and lower down, humble warrior, chair, Come on to the tippy toes. And drop down. Deeper chair. Let it burn. Hands down. Sweeping into warrior chair on the left side. And feel that the booty, the glutes, really engaging here. The lower back. The shoulder blades, the upper back. The muscles around the spine. And again, imagine your breath, that creative structure of water from, from the earth. And step it back. Sweep it back. Exhale. Hands away from you, lower down. And chair. <sighs> Sit back, really feel your body pushing all the way back. Inhale, coming out. Arch, lift. Feel the breath as that creative juice, creative structure water. Carrying the memory of everything that's ever been in our in our solar system and beyond. Water is amazing, it carries, and that's one of the proofs that we're all one. We all are part, we're water and we, it's in, within us, the structure that is all interconnected with all of the rest of the water. 
and carries the memory of everything. All right, this time, shifting onto the right, warrior three, but try to reach either out, or if you wanna make it very back strengthening, forward. That's also core here. What's a booty? Even though we're not jumping around, trust me. Step it back in warrior one. Feel the warrior one. Revolving half moon, left hand down. Right arm up. Step it back, warrior one, and sweep it in a twist. Right hand down the left leg. Great, chair. <sighs> left side, warrior three. Feel the body, just doing the work. <laughs> Or in. Warrior one. The majestic warrior one. Revolving half moon. Twist it back, left hand down the right leg, right arm up. Chair. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair. Onto the tippy toes. <laughs> Drop it down. Warrior three. And here, this is a transition. Come up to standing and after you come up to standing, then you can open your left hip and step into warrior two. Two, half moon. Projecting through the heel. Close your eyes or keep them open, but imagine that creative force moving through you from the roots into your body, into your entire being and consciousness too. It's reviving your soul. We have stepped in through a portal that is actually a soul jump, a quantum soul leap, something very exciting. So do not get sucked into the fear and upset and despair. Celebrate that your soul had this massive grand opportunity and we're gonna manifest it in the physical. Warrior two. Reverse it. And side angle. And close down. High lunge, press into the heel, and step it into chair. 
Warrior three on the left side. Keep your left knee bent as you come up and then open. And step back, warrior two. This is Sophie's favorite time. It means real deep sleep. No one's gonna bother her. No running around. She adores it. And half moon. And warrior two, reverse it. With grandness in your gestures or in your movement. Grandeur, side angle. And low lunge. And chair. Warrior three on the right side. This will give you amazing <laughs> bathing suit back. Come up and again when you're up with knee bent, knees bent, open. And plie this time. That's just a something for the joints to move through it in a gentle way. All right, shift to one side and then to the other. And one and two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, elongate both sides, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Open the arms out. We're gonna do side angle on one side. Try to keep the other leg where it was. I felt a nice chiropractic adjustment. Other side. And chair. Reach up, warrior three. This is the bathing suit back pose. It's gonna give you that back. <laughs> All right, come up. I'm starting to feel it, it's compounding. Open and then step. Step into, into a plie and hold it. I was just, I just had a visual of something that happened to me 20 years ago, pretty much. And I'll tell you the story while we're sitting here. I probably have never said that story on camera. Mm -hmm. I had just moved to, Santa, uh, to Culver City, Santa Monica, okay, Los Angeles. And I was in Santa Monica in Whole Foods. Back then, actually, it was wild oats, all the details. 
and I had a really bad day. I, something big had happened and I was just really deep into the sorrow and darkness. I was 22 and my moods were on my face <laughs> continuously. And always everybody told me I'm very moody, which I'm not by myself on my own, but that's how I was perceived, moody. And I remember I entered with my darkness, dark gloomy thoughts and sadness. I was just sad and worried in, into wild oats. And this guy, this Jamaican guy with dreadlocks and roller skates comes around me and he's like, hi. And I'm like, hmm, whatever. <laughs> and he just starts spinning around me everywhere I go. <laughs> Throughout the entire store I go pick up this and he's just there and he's like, hi. <laughs> and I'm like, just go away. And finally, just his energy was so amazing. And there is quite a bit of that sometimes in Venice and Santa Monica. And finally I smiled he was like, was it this hard? And then he left. <laughs> he just infused me with his enthusiasm. It's like, it will be okay. I think he said something on, on the way that it will work out, don't worry, it will be okay. And he totally shifted me. <laughs> it was a good, a good moment. All right. Just move side to side here. And I just want you to move in a twisting manner here. So you're gonna bring the left elbow to your right, but keep your chest open and the right to your left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, through the core. Eight, nine, ten. Straighten and step at the front. Inhale, reach over the head, arch. Exhale, dive. Stomach vacuum. inhale reach over the head with that feeling of the structure water running through you that tapped deep feeling it's just a very deep feeling deep into the earth redwoods don't catch on fire easily they have a protective layer they have this grand wisdom and stature about them so feel that tapping feel that creative power you're tapping now way deeper than ever before into your soul into the gaius frequency into your own heart to build your new life your new way of being because a lot of us will restructure how we work in society what we give and chair shift onto the right side warrior theme and single leg chair warrior three single leg chair two three four five High lunge, white high lunge, single leg chair, white high lunge, single leg chair, three, four, five, hold it. Release, chair, 
warrior two on the left side. Single leg chair. Two. Really feel the muscles engaging as you push the heel up and back. Three. Four. Five. Step it back, high lunge. Single leg chair, high lunge. Two. Three. Four, that brings circulation into your legs. Five for nice good circulation there and <clears throat> one more squeeze Ooh, all right inhale reach over the head we're on the right side single leg chair here we're gonna do Almost like a deadlift, touch the floor straight back, heel kick, single leg chair, two, three, four, feel the booty, five, six, booty shaper, seven, really feel it, lots of control. Eight, through the heel, when you push, you feel everything engaging. Nine. Ten. Chair. Release, left leg warrior three. Feel through the heel, everything engaging. You engage the booty through the heel as you lift. Chair, touch the floor, kick the heel, straight back, level hips, square hips. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Chair. And clasp above, side bend, look up. Change. Reaching up, elongating. Chair. Warrior one onto the, uh, warrior, sorry, three. Onto the right side. Coming up, bent knees. Then you can open the hips. Warrior two. Side angle. Warrior two. Through the elbow. Twist, reach. Two. Twist right to the right. Four. Five. Here it's gonna, we're gonna add onto it. One. Sweep up, two, sweep up, three, sweep up, four, sweep up, lots of elongation here, five, sweep up, and step at the front, chair, warrior three on the left side, 
really feel that glute connection and <laughs> come out open step back warrior two side angle really elongate a lot of length here grandeur Warrior two, left elbow and twist and forward. It doesn't have to be forceful, but it can be fluid or restructured. Two, from the core. Three, controlling the shoulder. Four, five. Now I'll add in one, sweep up. Two, sweep up. Three, Sweep up, four, sweep up, five, sweep up, and straighten, step out, shake it out, chair, warrior, three onto the right side, to high lunge, if your glutes are not phenomenal after this class, especially if you repeat it a couple of times. <laughs> no, they will be. <sighs> I take the if away. I take it back. All right, twist. And come out. And here again, we're gonna do a combination movement. <sighs> Been loving those. Right elbow to the right. One, and move to the right with your hands. Two, that will give you a lot of uh, core control. It will trim, trim down this area and tone up the organs. Remove some of the fat around the organs, if there is any, or tone them. Just we want a lot of this here to function perfectly, if possible, and it is possible. Three, and reach over. Four, keep your shoulders down and with integrity, shoulder engage here. Five, six, seven, goodness, eight, nine, let's take a break, nine, ten, great, chair. Warrior, three on the left side. Feel all the glutes. High lunge, twist. Hmm, juicy. Structure, water moving. All right, come out. So, one to the left and to the left. This is all to the left. Two, elbow, two side bend. Three, elongating both sides. Left and right is elongating. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and and straighten, step out, shake it out. Tap your heels. When you tap, feel that you're tossing away all the leftovers of the old program, of the old belief system, of the things you hold on and they're still in the structure. Toss them out. Tap them out, just kind of the way we toss water. A lot of this stuff happens, I said it in the last few classes, just the intention of it begins the process of integration of the intention. So once we want to move into a path, it starts with the intention, then the 
holding the vision, expanding the vision, holding it in the heart structure. And from there, um, alignment and action comes and everything manifests from that process. Obviously it's a continuous process and we gotta stay the whole course. If we drop out halfway, we have to start over, but that's why we stay in the process, stay in the high frequency and continue going towards that vision. Your vision wants you to be consistent and in the higher frequency so you can manifest it. And things are gonna come your way to try to distract you, to pull you away, to tell you it's impossible, all this bad stuff is happening in the world. You're an observer, you're a tree. Things are wishing, actually, let's do this exercise. So, you're a tree. And things are just swishing around you, big winds. Just massive winds that affect the bushes and the leaves and the other plants, other trees, uh, birds, wildlife, but you're a sequoia. And you're just observing, you're letting it play out. To you, it's like a child that's having a tantrum. And you just observe it and you're still in your center, in your core, and in, in your integrity, in your, in, in your own path that is a path of longevity with the connection, the memory of that eternal nature of your soul, that indestructible nature of your consciousness. Consciousness is a above the soul because the soul is still a little bit of a it's in the physical it's still a unit it's still separate so feel the wind and just observe it that is a metaphor for life especially right now i want you all to be observers and to not put emotion into what you see to stay in the heart the heart does not generate emotion it generates heart a uh, love frequency and love is a principle, one of the foundational principles in the universe, the fabric of existence. So you're in the love, in the compassion, you're involved, fully involved in your life, into your existence. You're observing everything play out. Everything is playing out and you're letting it just move away as, as the wind does. Pick up, settle down, until it dies down and you remain the entire time in the heart just trusting your soul guidance trusting your path that you are on an evolutionary path soul path you're evolving you're expanding you have just stepped through a grand portal for your soul your soul just expanded and this is gonna be embodied soon soon you're gonna feel it in more tangible ways You're standing in your integrity, in your power, in your interconnectedness with Gaia, Mother Nature, sourcing, getting nourishment from there, sourcing creativity through there so that you can be the light and you can bring the new and the innovative and um, expansive revolutionary, revolutionary thought new thought, new pattern, structure, forward into the world that is now being seated. We're seeding it and your vision is so important. And we stand here until the storm is gone and the entire time we were in the heart. And this class is perfect for uh, moon days period because we didn't do inversions as you noticed so market market for that all right sit down and we're going to lean back the previous class I did oak was very much core so much core and twisting and um, that uh, work on the obliques and the waistline this one as you can tell, it was a lot of structure and strength in the back. And 
All right, pull the belly in and lean back. And really, as you slightly let go of your um, fingertips, not completely, just slightly, shifting more into the core and away from the hands, feel that massive grand connection without the structure falling. Because mostly people do, do it like this, and there is absolutely no benefit to this, actually the opposite. So stay in the perfection of this pose. This pose, I generally don't care for perfection, but perfect this one. <laughs> you can reach forward if you think you can hold it, or reach with one hand and then the other, and again. Beautiful. All right, forward fold. <sighs> Left foot on the in the inner thigh forward fold here soften change Turn around for pigeon. You can adjust it, level the hips, square the hips, lengthen, open, pop the chest up like a pigeon. And keep that length lower down. It's interesting because throughout this class, these images of this, my 22 year old living in those parts of Santa Monica and Venice, keeps coming in all the characters and all the smiles and the rollerblading and just the sunshine. All of this is just very vivid right now. It's almost weaved into the practice. <laughs> there was a drum circle in Venice every Sunday and I would go there and then I would forget that I'm running out of parking time and run to the car. <laughs> and everyone was just a massive character and sharing light and smiles and maybe because that is the preceding of that new impulse that will be in, in the coming new humanity. It was preceded in the Gnostic teachings, so in those Gnostic Gnostic movements. There was one in Bulgaria in the, I'm going to say around the 600s, but I could be very off. I might be very off. 1200s, I think. 12, uh, 1200, somewhere there. Don't take my word for the timing. They were, uh, they were agnostic um, sect or agnostic movement of ascetic priests that um, that were uh, living in the mountains, uh, a vegetarian um, brotherhood or priesthood of uh, people that denied the, the riches of the earthly life and were deeply uh, studying the um, mystic teachings, the Christ teachings, the Christ message. And that did not get integrated into humanity back then because the time was not right they were the the force that prepared that that form of consciousness of higher consciousness that is coming back during the age of aquarius so they were almost like the energy the foundational energy that was laid down and it didn't succeed they were heavily persecuted and they disappeared but that form of powerful um, consciousness, it, the consciousness didn't extinct, that was seeded 
for it to really take form during the age of Aquarius, which has started, but of course that is a very slow process. And in February this month we're having we're having in the next week or so, uh, depending on when the class goes on, six planets in Aquarius, including that that star that happened of Jupiter Saturn conjunction on December 21st, which was the beginning of the new uh, year zero in the oldest Bulgarian calendar, oldest calendar on Earth, year zero. That was in zero degrees of Aquarius, very powerful. So that marked a more official start of the age of Aquarius. And on top of it, Pluto is entering Aquarius, will enter Aquarius in 2024. So that will solidify even more so that movement that will begin in art, in music, in thought, in community, communes. All right, change. And for those of you that say sometimes I talk too much, that is true, there is classes when I talk, but because I have over a thousand classes, I also have a lot of classes where I don't talk. So I, I think I've offered a really big mix of a little bit of everything. I'm not always in a mood to talk. So it's kind of, it's not rare, but it's mostly I prefer to um, keep to myself. But I always want to be in a joyous mood because I want you to be reminded to tap into that joy element that you're always nourished. Inner joy that is not dependent on external circumstances element. And even if you don't feel it, just feel it in the physical, just perk up a little, smile a little, it will come, it will follow. It is always there for you, it's always within reach. And once you know that your joy comes from within, it is not something that you're waiting to happen outside for you to be joyous, then it becomes really powerful and uh, uh, authentic and real joy. And so we begin to, we become resourceful, inner resources. We begin to be the builders because it's no longer something that is conditional. It is something you have intended to create and it is unwavering all right coming up beautiful and you can lay down pelvic tilt you can press your shoulders down reach up palms facing each other reach slightly over the head pull mula bandha in and exhale pelvic tilt and a little bit of stomach vacuum Great, plow, but if you have marked the class for future for no inversions, a few more pelvic tilts here, or you can continue a little more with the pigeon stretches, otherwise plow.
shoulder stand and lower down slowly gently supine twist knee across the body look away from your knee soften give in surrender let go allow coming up opposite side Bridge pose, feet parallel to each other, press into the inner and outer edges of the feet, outer shoulders, extend the tailbone, bring your chest to the chin. Beautiful, release, <sighs> lay down, you can do legs up a wall or shavasana with the mantra here, I surrender to the flow of life. And allow yourself to fully surrender to the moment, to the to the pose and stay here for as long as you need to remember to flow with strength and ease namaste